Denver has a lot of public art. It doesn't take long to notice if you're looking for it. If you don't live here, you might be thinking of the airport because DIA already has the reputation of being a weird place with weird art. Which it is, by the way. It's got a bunch of cool stuff. The one you absolutely can't miss is titled Blue Mustang, the 32-foot-tall rearing horse with glowing red eyes that you have to pass on your way in and out of DIA. It pretty much immediately got called Lucifer for obvious reasons. So I've asked the question about which piece of art Denverites can agree to hate. You might assume it's his equine majesty, but I think you'd be wrong. It's partly because DIA is actually pretty far from Denver proper, so you'll only see Lucifer if you're already out there for the airport. But that's not the case for the statue we're going to see today, which is called a National Velvet. You probably don't recognize the name even if you're a fellow Coloradan, but you'll know it if you spend time in Denver. It's right at the foot of this bridge over I-25 called Highland Bridge. Yeah, that thing. This is National Velvet by John McEnroe, and it's been here for 16 years, since 2008. The whole thing is 20 feet tall with a fiberglass base, and the sculpture itself is a plastic resin that's been painted red. You can actually see the dripping on the sculpture up close, though I don't know if that's from the resin or the paint. The artist describes it as being like a candy shell. There are lights that shine through it after dark. That water balloon look of the individual pieces comes from how it was made. The artist and a team made bags out of a kind of industrial nylon that his friend uses to make prosthetic limbs. They then filled the bags with sand, stacked them up, and covered the pile in resin. Once it was hardened, they cut away the bags and burned off the excess nylon and painted it all red using boat paint. The title comes from a 1944 film of the same name, just because it was playing in the studio while McEnroe was working. National Velvet, about a race called the Grand National, and a girl named Velvet. He says it's his take on the classic shape and art, the obelisk. It's a traditional shape made in a non-traditional way. So you can probably see why this thing would be unpopular. It looks like a pile of beans to me, but the red color and the saggy shape of the individual beans, it definitely makes it look more like human kidneys than kidney beans. The way it glows at night makes it look creepy and otherworldly, something else that has in common with Lucifer. It kind of resembles a Christmas tree when it's lit up, or at least it did when it was first installed. It's much dimmer after 16 years, and I assume no light bulb changes. But still, the contrast is pretty stark. The bridge makes clean white lines against the sky and cityscapes. This sculpture is a messy stack of sacks painted visceral red. It looks like a radioactive pile of intestines next to one of our nicest pedestrian bridges. So what does John McEnroe have to say for himself? says it's just his take on the obelisk, it's just his art, and the name is just an evocative pair of words for an 80-year-old movie. So along with it being right smack inside of Denver and it being sort of grotesque, this is the third reason I'd say this piece is the most hated public statue in Denver. It was made by exactly the kind of artist that's really easy to dislike if artists frustrate you. He used some creepy material that his weird best friend uses to make prosthetic limbs in order to make a huge blood-red sculpture that glows at night, sitting right at the foot of this modern-looking bridge and visible from our biggest highway, and now he refuses to say what it even is? The artist is quoted saying, National Velvet does not represent anything. It is not a stand-in for a political perspective, it is not a social idea, it is not an inside art joke, and it is not a night beacon alien seed pod. Maybe. It seems to me like he very clearly had a sense of humor about it, and he had every intention of creating a provocative piece with an abstract shape that wasn't going to be an immediate hit with the masses. On the one hand, I'm with the masses on taste here. I find National Velvet pretty unpleasant to look at. It's visceral in every way, literally like viscera, but also kind of stomach churning. But I really appreciate that kind of artistry and vision. The word postmodern sometimes gets thrown around like an insult, but I really appreciate the kind of conversations these art pieces create about what art or beauty even truly is. So another thing about public art is that a lot of times it's paid for with public funds, or in other words, your taxes. So if you don't like a piece of publicly funded art, it can feel like you paid for something there's a radio host that criticized National Velvet back when it was unveiled, supposedly for being inappropriate, but I listened to him and it sounded to me like that's what happened. He doesn't like the art, the art was funded by taxpayer money, 
He's a taxpayer, so he feels ripped off. I disagree with this kind of viewpoint. I think the only time censoring an art piece would make sense is if it was making somebody feel unsafe, and something being a little phallic just doesn't make that argument. I can understand being upset that your taxes were spent on something you don't like, but I'm pretty sure I don't agree with what most of my taxes are spent on. Art enriches people's lives. Even if you think it's ugly, it's unique. No one makes me ask this. I'm happy to have my taxes spent on ugly art. Guy yelling about it on the radio is being pretty close-minded and a little childish. The person who uploaded the clips of his show sure thinks so, and it sounds like Hickenlooper called in to tell the guy the same thing. Your face just point. turned as red as the penis. The artist Macro didn't get involved in any of that nonsense, and honestly, good for him.